This is going to be... Yeah, Thick of Thieves, bro. All right, this is about to be a chat GPT episode, from what I hear from the producer. So the whole episode is going to be run by chat GPT. Yes, and all the prompts and all the directions of the... (laughs) That's a crazy concept. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to see... Honestly, listen, guys. If this episode is better than our other episodes, um, we're probably all going to be dead in five to ten years. Yeah, because now chat GPT-5 is coming out. Because it's... Because if anything is better than us, it's robots. What? I want to talk about cash. Before we get into ChatGPT episode, yeah. Um, did you see that ChatGPT five being integrated into four, four being integrated into uh, the robot's facial expressions? It no. just came out a couple days ago. No, it's wild. And the dude asking questions, he's like, the the, the robot's like, I don't understand what you're saying. And he goes, I'm just trying to test your your. Uh, your facial expressions. And it goes, it goes, oh, okay. Like, it was like upset that it couldn't be more human. I have to show you the video. Right. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it in the, another section. But. Uh, well, before we get started, let's, uh, let's take ourselves a little shot. You know what I'm saying? Just to celebrate. You know what I'm saying? We're having a good day. We're on the Thickest Thieves podcast. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What we got? What we got going on? Okay. So for our first. Chat GPT has a game that we're going to play, and it's called One Word Story. One Word Story. The objective is to create a cohesive story by alternating one word at a time with your partner. Here are the instructions <clears throat> from Chat GPT. You have to decide on a theme for your story. I think Chat GPT should come up with a theme for the story. Oh, well, say no more. I don't know how this is going to work, though, because like you don't know the English language very well. I know Ebonics. Okay. For the story, how about a story where the world is suddenly turned upside down when all animals, from the tiniest insects to the largest mammals, gain the ability to speak and think like humans overnight? All animals gain sentience, and or the ability to speak like humans. This overnight. isn't very AI, overnight. And are we coming from the perspective of humans? I guess we'll let the story figure that out. One word at a time. This is going to be... Quite difficult, but let's get to it. Let's try it. Cow. <laughs> That's not the beginning of a sentence, bro. You can't a. just be like... <laughs> hey, there, I'll use a vowel. Okay, a. okay. Cow. Went. Two. A. Dance. At. A. Disco. Then. Another. Cow pulled up Pornhub. <laughs> I know <laughs> what <laughs> that <laughs> must mean <laughs> that. Website is sexy for cows. <laughs> it has a category called moo. How do we get to sentience, bro? Okay. Um, <clears throat> then. Networks. Started. Broadcasting. The. Uprising. Of. Animals. <laughs> and. Moo. Was. Broadcasted. As. A code word for human desolation. (laughs) This this is terrible. (laughs) Oh my God. So far, what what, what I got from that, if I was viewing that from like an audience perspective, is that a cow went to a dance. Yeah, and then another another cow cow showed up. up, And then somewhere down the line, they realized that these cows were watching porn, so they broadcasted it online. Yes. And they were like, okay, like, 
and, and they realized that moo is actually a code word for, for human desolation. That's what it was. Desolation? I think that just means you're deserted. <laughs> uh, human, like yeah. Desecration? Demolition. Demolition. <laughs> <laughs> human, human sacrifice. That's what it was, yeah. Okay. Anyway, All that right. Was fun. That was funny, dude. I, that, I'm not that, gonna was, lie. that was funny, but we need some practice. Yes, we, we need do. to, maybe we, yeah. Maybe did we, you ever play, real quick, did you ever uh, do those books in elementary school where you had to write like a vowel or a noun with an adjective and it would make a sentence? Have, you're asking me if I've oh, ever sorry, written I, a sentence no, before <laughs> <laughs> in school? <laughs> no. It would be like, it would be like, David, it would say name, and be like, David went to, and then you write an adjective, and then it would tell this whole story. And oh, like, Mad Libs. Mad Libs. Yeah. That's what it is. I love yes. Mad Libs. Bro. Mad I grew up Libs. doing Mad Libs. Yeah, they were, so they were fire. They were yes, fire. I love those. Anyways, that was funny, dude. Chat GPT. Okay, Chat GPT has outsmarted us because clearly we that are is, not ready for that prompt. Yes, not at all. Next section. So next up, Chat GPT has a rank prompt. Mm. You're going to rank the following items from most important to least important when it comes to how this item impacts whether a movie is great. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. The items are storyline, acting, cinematography. I mean, I think we probably agree on this. Story is probably the first. The I mean, number one thing. Yeah, I think that's definitely story the number one thing. Story existed before film, filmmaking, so yeah, story yeah. is the most important thing, for sure. Yeah, and like that's like, you know, if you're on TikTok right now, there's so much talk about... I mean, TikTok doesn't have a ton of high-quality cinematography. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. But v videos can still go viral because there's something compelling about what you're seeing and the kind of the arc of yeah. the entire video. Yeah. Um, yeah, cinematography can fall to the wayside to story is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. Hmm. Acting or cinematography? Acting or cinematography? I think, I think it's got to be acting, It's got to right? be acting. Cinematography is one of those things... It just, it like just a, makes it look it's better. It's capturing... It's capturing the essence. Now, it can play a part in the story, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like, for the most part, it's capturing the essence of what's happening yeah. in the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, acting is part of what's happening yeah, in the like story. Yeah, like, it, 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 you know, if you have great cinematography and bad acting, Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, seriously, though, uh, it's weird. And bad, like, well, decent story. It's but. weird because, you know, like, we shoot videos and we really appreciate cinematography, but like the stories, yeah. we're writing the concepts that's always number one. Yeah, def 100%. definitely. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad we're on the same page. Story, acting, and cinematography. Rank them now in order of difficulty. In order of difficulty? Story, acting, and cinema. This is really difficult. So, story, okay, story, acting, cinematography. What is the hardest? Cinematography is the hardest. And I'm going to say that because that is all encompassing of every individual division of labor. You know, you've got gaffers, you've got like b everything that goes into making a frame. You've got set design, you've got, you know, wardrobe, all of these, everything that makes up a frame. So there's right? a lot of Including art forms the involved. Exactly. Lighting, and they have to be, color. and they're so technical that, yeah, exactly, yeah. that they have to be separated out. So it's not just one, like acting is okay, just. Hold on, hold on. But what, yeah, do you not think that. There's there's the, that many layers when it comes to story. Because no, I don't think so. I don't think so because I think you have people that revise the story and the, and of course actors bring something to the story. But but like usually scripts are getting sold by a group of people, like a couple people or a group of people. You know what I'm saying? Like the cinema the cinematography is like a much bigger umbrella. So just by default, I feel like that has to be the yeah. biggest, don't you think? I, I was actually I agree with you. I just wanted to challenge it because I think you're right because when you can you can you have people who have great stories with bad mm -hmm. cinematography. Just the same exact thing we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the cinematography aspect, to find a team of people who can do something so well is difficult. Right. Uh, down the pipeline, like you're saying, I'll make it quick, is like you have the cinematographer, mm -hmm. then you have the gaffer, then you have someone whose expertise is, fo is focused, then you have an art department who, who focuses on color and, yeah. and designing the yeah, set yeah. so the image is balanced, which is, which is like color theory and everything involved yep. in that. Yep. Then you have wardrobe, which benefits the color of the set. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have lens choice. Yep. Then you have exposure, and then, like you said, all the technical aspects of setting, yep. it, setting your exposure and making sure skin tones are correct. Yeah, that's 100% right. I agree with you. Second. What do you think is second? Second, in terms of hardest, I would say... I would say acting. I would say acting, too. Yeah. Dude, 
Okay, so you've done a couple acting situations. Why is it hard? As in, uh, well, uh, I think it's difficult. A better question is, why is it hard <clears throat> compared to performing as a rapper? Well, performing as a rapper is hard for some people as well. I think that there's, I mean, there's no dialogue necessary. Yeah. And I've also just, like, I can do the music video acting thing because I've done that enough. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, when it comes to delivering lines in a way that feels authentic, it's like there has to be a lot of, I mean, there's got to be a lot of training that goes into emulating and, and, and bringing up emotions that you currently actually don't feel. To, in order to make it feel authentic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that's really difficult to do. The reason I think story is at the bottom is just because everybody is familiar with story in general. Like humans are We've very... We've been story since forever. Exactly. So, yeah. so people, the average person probably has a better ability to write stories than they do to act. I'm yeah. glad you said that um, because I think some of the, I won't say some of the best, but some of my favorite storytellers are not telling stories in a creative format. Some of my favorite storytellers, and then when I say a creative format, you got people who, co- comedians are storytellers, and they're great at it. Yeah. You know who else is a storyteller? <clears throat> Musicians who have lyrics in their, in their song. Yeah. They're like rappers. They're storytellers, and they're good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, you have people who are just funny in your friend group, and sometimes they, they go off of, they'll have a punchline off of someone else's thing, but a lot of times they're telling a the story, they're recapping a story, my dad is one of my favorite storytellers because he's mm-hmm. always, like, he's, he teaches, when he's giving me a perspective on life, he's always, like, formatting it in the, in the, Yo, in that's, the, that's in a, a great, reflection of something he's already experienced, and it's a story. Yeah, so that's a great point that, day. like, that, like, everyday people, if they have nothing to do with filmmaking whatsoever, they are still telling stories just in conversation. All we the also time. tell stories in conversation all the time. Yes. And you know when, if you have like something crazy that happened, you have ways that you tell it that make it fun or like funnier or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you kind of test those. I'm sure your dad, your dad, you know, has all these catchphrases and different things that he says. You know those are market tested. You know that, that people didn't have nothing to say to him, so he kept them. <laughs> or like, like, just you know like yeah, just, they do that, bro. Like, it's so yeah. true. Like, how many t- the audience, how many times have you been like telling your friends a story about something crazy or someone they knew? Say you had a friend who was like acting crazy all the time and you're like, hey, bro, let me tell you about John. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it, but let me tell you. So we were at this, like you're setting it up. Yeah. You're like, you want to do the big <clears throat> twist and the reveal at the end. Yes. That's just basic storytelling. Yeah. You know that friend that like you di- doesn't talk a lot or and then like, you get mm-hmm. them in a group of people and like something happens, you get them drunk or something. And they're like extremely they open funny. Up. Yeah, yeah. They're like, bro, like J- Joe, like Jake is super funny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jake has a super funny aspect about him, and like no one knew that. And then Jake, at some point in his life, gets super confident, and then like his funniness starts to share and uh, like kind of disperse between his friend group. And we're like, we really appreciate that Jake has brought this to our lives. Like, I think that people, there's so many people on the earth, including me and you. Yeah. Whether as we continue to grow, like. There's like there's so many little things inside of us that we haven't been able to unleash. Yeah. Um. And and maybe Jake wasn't telling. Yeah. The jokes you're he saying to tell. for for fear of just being judged in a particular fashion. Jake's just nervous because he thinks that he might. He's he, who knows his his mind has conjured up this idea that if he talks, people think he's like he's gonna say something stupid. How many times yeah. have that has that happened uh, to me? A lot. Yeah. To me, where I'm like, I don't want to talk because like, for some reason, like, these people aren't gonna like me. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is that doesn't. I don't think that really exists. And if it does exist, like it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I definitely think that people, like some people, can be really too focused on what other people think. And I don't mean. I mean, this is an issue, especially now with the social climate. It's like, it's like it doesn't matter what side politically, or even honestly, if you're in the middle, even if you're in the dead center, like as center and as neutral as you can be. You're gonna find people that, that like they're gonna be like, yo, like how could, you're still idle, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I think no matter what perspective you take, you're gonna be judged for it just because of the nature of like 7.7 billion people on Earth and the fact that everybody thinks differently, you know. I yeah. think that it's the it's the not caring and the understanding yeah. that like not everyone deserves that. And also, bro, we're thought. here for such a small like blip in time, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. The world has, the world keeps spinning and keeps. You know, it just keeps going. We're going to live and we're going to die, and hopefully we extend ourselves through kids, and, you know, and they do bigger and better things, and they're better people than we are. And, uh, 
Yeah, dude, like, while you're here, like, you say something that is, is dumb, it's like, bro, d- you got to dispense with that. You got to dispense with that, like, pretty quickly. Bro, it's, is it yeah. not, it's so, so freeing. Like, Jordan Peterson, he talks, and we've we been talking about this man a lot. Like, like, bro, like, we're in love with this man, but. <laughs> Hop off is nuts. I know, but, like, <laughs> Jordan Peterson, like, talks about that. You know, he starts, it brings him to emotion, like, emotional, like, Turmoil, I guess is not the the, word, but the best word, but like he's crying in these interviews when he's talking about finding purpose, and he always talks about it in a simplified aspect, which I always thought was interesting. When he's like, he's like, just like, it doesn't have to be like I'm going to be a filmmaker and tell films about segregation to like t- to that's my purpose. He's like, no, like just get up, and like today I'm going to walk my dog. Like, yeah, that's the purpose for today. I was going to walk my dog because I like my dog and it needs exercise. Tomorrow, it's I'm going to call my mom and try to build that relationship with my mom. The next day, I'm going to try to go run three miles. Yeah. The next day, I'm yeah. going to run a half marathon. And then after that, I'm going to lift weights. It's like, okay. it's those situ- it's like those simplified, it's finding your full potential and then like understanding that, like, that there's going to be many roadblocks in the way of, that, of you reaching that potential. And one of those is like your own thoughts, mm-hmm. which is like, I'm not good enough yeah. to reach out to my mom anymore. I'm not, I'm, I don't have the social skills enough to convince her that we're still, like, that family can still be a priority in our lives, right? Like, these are these things that people, like... You know, I think the biggest one is, though, I think ahead. the biggest one is, in terms of just being a blockade between people and the relationships that they have, is thinking that they are right and their perspective is right and this other person is the flawed one. And look, even right. even if That's you were so true. able to look at it objectively, you may be correct. But I think the the big lesson to learn is that you, if you don't accept responsibility for your involvement in that portion of the relationship, then you will never have a relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, I've I've come to terms with people in my life that that I that I intend to keep in my life. I've you know I wrestle with these things of like yo, am I in the wrong with this? I feel like there's some kind of weirdness here or whatever, and I, I really try to run it through and check myself as, as part of that. And then I think what I'm able to do after I kind of really sit with it and really make sure that I am assessing myself properly, a lot of times I realize, oh, like maybe I just made them feel attacked. Or maybe when I said this, they felt like they had to be competitive because of a... Uh, and insecurity, or maybe maybe this happened, be, you know what I'm saying? And like, the more you take the responsibility on for yourself, the more, the more you're able to go, okay, wait, let me, what can I actively do to add back to that, that relationship? Like, I, I guess, I think, you know, what Jordan Peterson talks about a lot is, or like a lot of people will bring up, oh my, after listening to all of your different content, you know what I'm saying, I re- established or like rekindled the relationship with my father or something like that right and it was because they were listening to this Jordan Peterson will say stuff like like well what are you gonna do you just you have a bad relationship with your dad what are you gonna do about it you know what I'm saying because like you're sitting here being like well my dad should call me or my dad should when is he when is he gonna realize that that this or what if it never you know happens? what I'm saying yeah yeah but not only that it's like hey but maybe you're an asshole also maybe you haven't called him Maybe you He's know what I'm saying. He's having the same conversation about you. Like, yeah, why exactly, exactly. And it takes one person to just kind of like open that door. I mean, I've even seen there's this channel called Soft White Underbelly, which I think I've told you about. Yeah, but it's, it's um, crazy. This guy who interviews Crater a bunch Spotlight. of people that would be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, he's pretty huge, but I know, but still, Creator Spotlight. Yeah, if you ever heard? Yeah, of it. Soft White Underbelly is a, a YouTube channel where like the this this photographer who used to work in the ad space. He he does interviews with people off a of Skid Row. And a lot of them are, uh, it'll tell you exactly what they are in the title, but like a lot of them are drug addicts, prostitutes, gang members, ex-gang members, people with gambling addictions, whatever. And I I find them really interesting. I can only watch a few at a time because they get really like dark. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people have a lot of trauma and and, and things of that nature. But um, one of the things that, that, uh, one of the recent ones that I watched was this this, uh, guy who, went to church his 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 mom basically changed his dad his dad used to abuse his family his mom changed uh became christian and and he was like he was in prison for like 10 years he gets out sees that his mom is different whatever and one day she needed a ride to church and he's like cool but i'm not trying to like go in 
but he ends up sitting with the uh, the pastor, like comes up to him in the car and was like, yo, you want to come in and eat some food? And he's like, all right, I guess I'll eat some food. Mm-hmm. So he gets in there and the pastor's like just, just discussing some things with him and, and breaking down some of the things that he thought maybe like he had wrong or like put him in a different perspective for him. But at the end of that conversation, the pastor said, will you do me a favor? He goes, he goes, I want you to call your dad and I want you to apologize to him. And, and the guy expressed that he was like, oh, no, nah, like, I'm not doing that. Like, that's insane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why would I apologize to him? He abused m- me and my mom for so long, whatever. I don't talk to that man. Fuck that guy. You know what I mean? But, uh, but he, he, he kind of like sat with it a little bit because he thought a lot of what the, other, the pastor was saying was, was decent. He ended up calling his dad and saying, can we meet? I'd like to talk to you. They sit down. He said, it's extremely awkward. There's this whole thing. And eventually he just like takes it upon himself to be like, hey, the reason I brought you here is because I wanted to do apologize for, you know, for not living up to my full potential, you know, for not being the best son, you know what I'm saying, for getting into all this stuff. And uh, he said that his dad started crying and said, no, I apologize for all of this, right? And and it basically it was, it just took that one conversation in order for them to bridge that gap and realized that they had both grown out of that. And then their relationship after that flourished. He said that him and his dad are like like inseparable mm. now. That's and, incredible. And it, right? And it's insane. And and I think that it's, if you had not just put your pride aside, if you had not taken that responsibility onto yourself, then you're just accepting defeat as far as that relationship goes. And there's certain relationships where maybe it's like, it's too gone, like they don't want to talk to you at all. It doesn't matter if you reach out, whatever the case is cool, but you can at least see that. But I think that there are so many people that, that just remove their own responsibility in the, in the relationship that, that they don't allow for those conversations to be had or don't, you know, are unable to bring those things up. And I think that's a, it's a really sad thing. And and I think Jordan Peterson talks about that a lot, which is do like, what are you going to do about it? You just like, life is hard. Life is difficult, period. Right. You know what I'm saying? People, relationships are difficult. Communication is difficult. So what are you, but, but are you, you're just the best communicator ever. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else in your life that you don't have relationships with, they all just suck at communication. They suck at having relationships. They They think they're better than they are. Yeah, they had a perfect like run. They were like, I communicated, I maneuvered this situation completely flawless. Yeah. And they, and the blame is all on them. And probably the blame is maybe mostly on them, but like, it's not all, definitely not all them. Some of it is you. Yeah, like pride maybe. in that situation. Yeah, like or maybe situation it, maybe was, it's all you. Maybe everything stems from you. Who? So I mean, you, I had to realize that for myself, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll, I'll be real short with this, but just for me, I had a point where I was like, I don't have very many close friendships, and like something keeps happening, some kind of disconnect keeps happening with me and people, and it seems like people don't necessarily want to be around me as often as I'd like them to want to be around me, and it really just you know, as as I started digging into myself, I'm like, oh. Like, my communication style is quite off-putting. Like, I don't listen enough. You know what I'm saying? I spend way too much time just talking about myself and what I have going on because I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm not trying to flex. I wasn't just trying to flex on everybody. But to me, in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm excited about all these things I have going on and I need somebody to tell and whatever. But that just comes off as like, this guy only cares about himself. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so... So for that, the issue is me. And like now, look at this. Like this is crazy to me to address this real quick. I'm with my best friend right. making a podcast, business that we own. We funded this. And in the background here. Wait, we how ha- much did this cost? <laughs> <laughs> but no, in the background, bro, we have my brother and my fiance yeah. like working on this. Like this is, a, this is the fruits of the labor of working on myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because right. like, why would they want to be involved in what we had? Like, you know what I'm saying? If it, if it was like, well, there's if money. I fi- <laughs> okay, that's true. Okay, <laughs> you, you go, you go. Let, let, let me just tell you I don't one think thing. Greg's bro. doing it for free. <laughs> the leaky's definitely not doing it free. She does not need it. <laughs> like you just, you just destroyed my whole argument. I was trying to be. I'm like, just saying, like, you I was trying to be vulnerable yourself, and like, deep, bro. You're not working on yourself enough to get people to do free stuff. You're not like a cult leader. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. You just you just like humbled me in this yeah, that's moment. What I'm I just go. I just go. In that conversation. I thought it was all me this whole time. <laughs> no, I feel what you're saying though. It's 100 yeah. percent right. We we what? went super far. <laughs> like, but like it was definitely 
something I it was I like that conversation. All right, let's a lot. go, dude. Okay, yeah. okay. Wait, this is supposed to be the Chat GPT episode, bro. What are we out. supposed to be doing? <laughs> <Huh>? What? <laughs> I feel so vulnerable right now, bro. I'm <laughs> leaky. I'm sorry. I'm feeling so vulnerable I'm right so, now. I'm sorry, David. So vulnerable right now. Let me tell you, bro, what actually happened, bro, between me and one of my best friends. I go, bro, he seen me naked, is... bro, and we just went with it. <laughs> it wasn't you, bro. I'm sorry, because I know you wanted it. <laughs> That's too far. I don't... All right, all right. I chat GPT had a couple more statements for me. Bro, do we have to cut this? No. Oh, Everyone shit. Everyone knows I'm not gay. <laughs> Okay, okay, what are we, bro, we gotta get back on this chat GPT. Right, yeah, okay, let's do it. chat GPT really out here. Order. Okay, <laughs> well, dude, did you right. see the power of chat GPT, bro? It just made us talk nonsense. Actually, for, you know what I think it was? 33 minutes. I think it was. Chat GPT just made us talk about nonsense. I think it was the power of the few shots we had. We only took one on camera. That's true, yeah. I'm, so I think we're. <gasps> I'm a little faded. Okay, all right, what's that? <laughs> Yo, bro, I think I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Okay, here we go. Should movies be judged? solely on their artistic merit, or should their commercial success be taken into consideration? This is a great prompt. I'll give my perspective on this, and then you can let me know what you think, and if you disagree or agree okay. or whatever, and you, and, and you can let me know. I think that the reason there's commercial success is because something went right in the storytelling or whatever. I don't think that... I, I think your average person, even if they don't get super niche... You know what I'm saying? You watch a movie like uh, No Country for Old Men, it's not particularly exciting. It's not like an exhilarating movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, little, it, it's a little bit tense, but it's not like there's not crazy imagery happening at all times. Right. It's kind no, of a slow right, burn, yeah. right? We enjoy those types of things, but I think that for it to be commercially successful, it has to connect with the broadest amount of people, and, and people enjoy consuming things. They're not dumb. You know what I'm saying? They're watching things that they are like, entertaining. That they want to watch. Yeah, it's entertaining and, and it's yeah. market tested. So I think that has to be factored in there. I think for the artists, though, people that consider themselves artists or people that really like want to push the boundaries, that's the antithesis of commerciality because that's been done. You know what I'm saying? If everybody Commerci- likes it, you're saying commercial. It's it's being commercial. It fruit. can be can be re- it can be recreated. Like, you have The Rock. His movies are a lot alike. Yes. It can be recreated yes, because yeah. we know it's a recipe for success. Yeah, and, and I think not to say that there's not any commercially successful film that isn't also artistic. I think, honestly, they're probably most there's, of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah exactly. But at the same time, w- w- the, like, people who really are trying to break into new areas, they're trying to, like, everything everywhere all at once was... Pretty commercially, I mean, I don't actually don't know how commercially successful it was. It was decent after it won the awards and stuff. Right, right. But it connected with a lot of people. It was just great. But at the same time, they did so many different things in it that were unconventional. But Mm -hmm. let me me give a different example. Mother, okay, not super commercially viable, right? It was like this really slow burn. Not commercially viable at all. Right, but we appreciated it a lot because the structure of the film was so crazy. We'd never seen... Something that was like, what is going on? And it was kind of slow and kind of boring. And then Super the last, symbolic, like extra, over, over the top symbolic. And the last yeah. 15 minutes is just like... Insane. You just took PCP. And, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think that both need to be brought into it. That was my big looping way of getting that. What do you think? That's well, we know what the Academy believes because they give Oscars to only the artistically... Yeah, artistically right. Artistically, like, successful films. Yeah. Um, but, like... I think they do that because it's pushing the genre. It's pushing the yeah. art form, um, just like much like the Pulitzer Prize is doing with it when it accepts certain things like photos or, or articles. That's actually or, a great point. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a great point. The Oscars, like the people that are intimately close to the production of film and, and story writing, yes. and whatever, they're highlighting things that maybe the the general public has not. Yeah, they're seen not. They're that, not giving. Endgame is super successful. Yeah. Incredibly successful, the most successful film of all time. Yeah, yeah, it didn't make it to the Oscars. Yeah, uh, that, that's obviously like that's a, that's an obvious. Is they're pushing, they're giving awards yeah. to the genre, yeah, yeah. pushing okay. something that did something new. They're highlighting incredible acting. Mm-hmm. They they really mm-hmm. they they like the skill set of it all. I actually love that then for the the idea of it's such a big event 
and people care about it enough. Like the fact that everything everywhere all at once won so many Oscars, that's gonna expand the audience. Yeah. And I think right, that's a right. perfect film for that. I think that people care more about that when it comes to now the reason I think the I'm trying to figure out what the reason is people want to go see something, for instance, like I love going to see Fast and the Furious movies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh they're awesome. Like I obviously they're never gonna make it to the Oscars. Right. Unless they right. try something completely different. But like those movies are just super fun to watch. Unless Vin Diesel grows hair. That's what he needs to do. A toupee. Yeah. yeah. Or a mohawk. Get a toupee, bro. You yeah. get an Oscar. No, but like, why is that though? Because what would the... My, 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 my guess is that what would the category be? Like, the same movie as last time? See what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you make yeah, it... Yeah. What are the best screenplay? Mm-hmm. It's like, how's this best screenplay? It's the same one as Fast and Furious 5. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like, that's why they do oh, that. Oh, there's a mission... And the world is going to be destroyed yeah. unless you drive cars fast. Right, and Dom, is Dom, has to, and Dom mentions and family the, like and, seven times. And The Rock is able to hold together a helicopter and a car with his... That's his, so his stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. At the same time, it's so like... So do you... Okay, to cap it off though, what do you feel like commercial viability is as... My favorite director is Darren Aronofsky. He made Mother. Uh-huh. He made The Well. He made Requiem for a Dream. Okay. Noah. Mm-hmm. Uh... Several other great art, Black Swan. Mm-hmm. He made a lot of cr- incredible uh, movies, and a lot of those movies never make it to the never make it to the big screen in yep. a way that's yeah. commercially vi- like successful. Right. Um, and I think I don't know Darren Aronofsky firsthand, but he made like he made like the Noahs, which were super successful movies. Requiem for a Dream. These movies that made it into the. And he, but he then now he only makes the Well. He made Mother. He's making all these mm-hmm. like. A24 level, like indie film type yeah. films. Yeah. I think it's because he's reached, and I think that's because he's reached a point in his career where like, he's like, I can make the films I want to make. Yeah. And those films to him give him another purpose on the, on like the level of, uh, they give him another like reason to keep creating, which is to bend the, bend the genre, bend the art yeah. form a little bit. So for me, I think that the most successful thing is figuring out ways to Make the art film art form shake in yeah. a way that no one's seen it before. The Travis Scott I, I, world. Travis Scott. No, it's different. Okay, so music. It's different. I, I got a perfect music analogy, yeah, but but I was gonna I was gonna bring up the fact that I think when you I think that people I think there's a lot of artists who are very pretentious in the idea of if it's mainstream and not breaking boundaries, then it then it doesn't have artistic integrity, and I just think that's false. That's false. Yeah, that is false. Right. 100%. Right. So I think there's validity to both. I think so. For example, I listen to James Blake. Mm-hmm. James Blake is not very pop listenable. Your average listener, especially if you dig into like the song, the the certain EPs where he is really just doing like his style of music, where he's not trying to say make what something. You will. Which, like even "Say What You Will" is a little prettier. He has some weird, weird songs. Some weird records, but like some, like, they are artistically breaking boundaries. But they're not like they're not at the club. Radiohead. They're not. They're not yeah, Radiohead, a great yeah. example, right? Radiohead, it's like he has a cult fan base because musicians who are like really deep into like it's like what's this the weirdness man's doing something different, right? But at the yeah. same time, we love Drake. Drake is amazing. I think also, by the way, I think Drake's an innovator as well. But that's that's another conversation. But say even just like the a perfect pop song, you know what I'm saying? Just a pop song that feels good. I think there's as much validity to it, and I think part of that is the reason. I, I think ultimately why I feel this way is because I define art as the ability. How good art is, is how good is it at making you feel a particular emotion. And I think even if you have cookie cutter pop records, if that is the soundtrack to your beach day and you feel happy listening to that because, uh, you know, a, a, a one, four, six, five chord progression is used in all of pop music, mm-hmm. I think that's just as valid artistically as as something that just totally breaks all convention. Taylor Swift and I is think a it's good, different Taylor Swift flavors. is a good artist. Yeah, an amazing artist. Yes, she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I never so. I don't listen to her like that. But like Taylor yeah. Swift is she's making hits. Yeah. She's making people feel the way she feels in her songs relationship mm-hmm. wise. Kendrick is a great example because Kendrick I mean Kendrick's not making sicko mode, bro. Yeah, he's, he's not, not making as many commercially viable records. I mean, but for he, some reason, that man's people are like listen because because his music is so emotionally rich. Yeah, yeah, and it's so relatable to the human. Experience. So you so then you would agree with me though. I agree. 
You agree. There's not many things we disagree on. That's why we're friends. But yeah, except for the whole like tasting men thing. I'm not gay. People know that. <laughs> okay. It's just I know what I'm All right. Handsome. Chat GPT. Next prompt. Hey, what's up, man? No, I was actually just calling because I know what you're going through right now, and I just want to read something that really uh, spoke to me today. Um, and it comes from James chapter 1. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Dude, super bro. Oh, superhero my. movies are definitely oversaturating. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, uh, let me tell you real quick Go about how I feel about it. Hit me. From a, cause tell me if I'm wrong, but you're not super into the the comic made movie movies as I am. No, no, you yeah, you and Bryce, and Bryce are way way deeper so, into the comics. Yeah. As a Bryce is more even more more he's deeper than I am. But like, so I love comic book movies. My favorite movie was the Sam Raimi Spider Man's. I love those movies. I used to wait like literally live to watch those movies when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Um, and they lived, they were like, while I was 11 years old, Spider-Man 3 was like the movie to go for me. And like, yep. obviously that translated into Marvel a couple years, or 2018 or whatever, Endgame came out. Like, that, like I was screaming in the theater. You were there. Like, it was super fun, yep. super fun movie. Yep. Um, and I had a, I seen a TikTok the other day and it was showing a lot of cinematography from Endgame and, and like, Captain America and Iron Man from all the different movies of that phase of Marvel and some DC stuff. And it was like, we'll never, we'll probably never see this again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is, but like, remember, remember when Walking Dead came out and like then World War Z came out and then uh, all before that and then you had 28 Days Later? It was like a zombie you phase. A zombie phase. Right. You then think you it's had superhero phase? Vampire phase. You had Twilight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you okay. had some other vampire movies like Jennifer's Body, which crazy. And then you had, uh, what was that? What was I going to say? You had the, the uh, teenager, like, an apocalyptic, like, Hunger Games vibe. Yeah. You had, like, that Hunger Games. And then there was that other movie. I think it was, like, in, in or, I can't remember what it was called. It was, like, a Hunger Games, like, vibe. We had okay. teenagers playing as adults doing military things. It was, like, this whole vibe. You have these phases. Red Dawn. Was what? It like Red Dawn. Red Dawn with the dude from Drake and Josh. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, you had those movies, and people just, like, were on that phase. Superhero face, I think it's done. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, for me personally, yeah. I think everybody loved... Um, Chris. Christopher Nolan's Batman series because it didn't follow the conventional superhero thing. It made it more real. Right. It made it feel like... Well, that it, felt more it, human. It felt more human. And, like, you know, Batman is, like, a really dope superhero because he actually doesn't have any superpowers. Right, right. He's just, he's just like, an elite billionaire mm -hmm. that, that, like... With, with combat skills and whatever, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But um, So it's cool that they actually were like, hey, this is what it would be like if there was a real Batman in a real world. But I just feel like, for me, after Endgame, just all the, I'm just, even the art style of Marvel movies, like the look of them and like the They're the not taking art, it to a different look. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, man, I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored. Like it's, I agree. It's, it's like eye candy, but it's like we've seen this movie a hundred times. And, like, that's why when the new Batman came out with Robert Pattinson, I was like, this is different because I'd never be, seen cinematography fire. like that. That's far. I don't think superhero movies are dead if there's innovation with how they're portrayed. You know, the, even the Joker film. I, the, the Joker film, to me, was not as good as I thought it was going to be, personally. And we, we've had a conversation about that. But I think that, that even that, though, that's a different movie. That's a different look. That's a different spin on a... On a superhero villain mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's awesome yeah yeah you know what i'm saying it's like it's it's really really it's a film about like this guy who has all these all this trauma yeah. and all these issues and whatever so i think if superhero films are done that way cool but if we're just like if i'm, I'm not i don't want to watch any movie that resembles aquaman or the two you know the 2006 superman or, or green lantern i feel what you're saying like I'm, i agree i'm with bored you. yeah uh, it's it, the answer to, in short it's oversaturated 
I think that the best move would be for DC and Marvel and any other company making superhero movies to go back to the writing board and be like, let's slow down for a second. Let's stop the Mandalorian. Let's stop all the Disney plus Marvel stuff. Let's stop DC and HBO piss Max people stuff. Off with that one. What do you say? They're gonna make some people mad with that one. Yeah, and stop it, the Mandalorian. But it's like, well, the Mandalorian's pretty good actually. But like the Star Wars stuff in general, Andor, people didn't yeah. like that. Like, yeah. like all this stuff. Like, pull it back, bro. Like, yeah. chill out for a second because you over over and like you overestimated how much of this content we want. You thought we love Star Wars, you thought we love Marvel, you thought we love DC, so you just put a bunch of it out. Yeah. But we're not idiots. Yeah. So the audience wants to see good storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't just see Ant Man and go, <clears throat> like Ant Man's awesome. Like, no, yeah. we want to see Ant Man go through human like trials. Yeah. Why is Iron Man so successful? Because he was a man who made weapons who then regretted his creation and then made a made a weapon to counteract that. Spider Man. He was a kid who had nothing, his girl never wanted him, he was poor, his uncle died. He became a Spider-Man. Right. He wanted to fix the problems that yep. made him who he was. Yep. Yep. These are human yeah, interactions. Yeah, exactly. It's super power. But like, you don't. I, I don't feel that. Why? Why would I ever feel that way about freaking, bro, Ant Man, dog? Like, <laughs> Ant Man's super smart. It looks good. He like his dad. His whole family's rich and wealthy. Yeah. And like now he just like he didn't have any problems really. He just decided something that made him be able to hack the the quantum realm. Yeah, it's like, bro. I don't feel I don't relate to that at all. So, yeah. like, go back to the drawing board and feel, figure out how to relate this stuff to humans. Yeah, I will say real quick. This is a long segment, but like, Loki is a great show that a lot of people aren't talking about because it takes the character who a character who's like they bring him down to his worst moment, mm-hmm. and he has to figure out how to find purpose. Okay, in that moment, and uh, it's one of the few Marvel shows out right now that's I feel like is uh, really digging back into what makes superheroes so amazing. It's the it's the essence of creating taking a human desperation and using superpowers to lift that up okay so, so you're saying it's just a recap you're yeah. saying for you superhero movies need to get back to like intricate songwriting or songwriting <laughs> intricate script writing that can like make people really connect with these characters you know, it's a character development issue martin scorsese you. said he goes he cinema is about human stories that's why he doesn't like marvel movies i don't yeah. agree with him all the way i think that the reason we like Batman and why Batman's every fa- every person's favorite superhero is because he's a man who was pushed to extreme, extreme discipline. Yeah. To the point in which he would master all fighting yeah. styles, master yeah. detective skills. Like, he became the superhuman to fight the crime that yeah. killed his parents. Fire. We don't want to see nothing that doesn't... Like, why do I want to see Super... Bro, Superman's so corny to me. Yeah. Anyways. So- I, I, and I, I just... On, on my perspective, is I want to see just something different. I'm tired of the same look... Feel, arc. Yeah, you're I right just want to see yeah. like Suicide Squad for me was also different. It was comedy. Suicide like, Squad is funny. It's the funny. Second one, but yeah, the but one I'm, by James Gunn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm saying like that's just that's different. So, good stuff. Good stuff. I don't know. What do y'all think? Leave something in the comments because I'm actually genuinely curious because I I think most people will agree with us. Leave something in the comments. How many daggers will you Player? give superhero movies? <laughs> what? How many daggers do y'all give the superhero movie industry? <laughs> So, Kanye West has a lot of music about religion now. He's got the Sunday service. Mm-hmm. Other end of the spectrum, you have Lil Nas X, who, you know, released the, the song Montero, Call Me By Your Name, uh, which shows him going to hell and gives Satan a lap dance. Mm-hmm. What do you think is religion's role in music? Oh, I religion's think, role in music. Uh, religion's role in music. Well, I, I just think music is made... Like, there's a target audience for every story that can be told through music and every style and every flavor. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I think... I mean, I there's an audience that is... Like, you have a Christian audience and you have all the music for them and then you have people who despise Christianity and you've got... their. You know what I'm saying? They're going to connect with other stuff that... I don't know. I mean, I guess religion's role is just what it, like that's just another part of being a human. So I think and that's music just a, is a reflection of that. Yeah, and I think there's just because not every song has m- most songs probably don't have any religious connotation. Period. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just an aspect that you could talk about. So I guess for me, religion and music is just like yo, like if you if you want to play with that, you can play with that. You know what I'm saying? If you want to communicate those things, so you know we have a lot of Christian hip hop friends. 
Yeah. It's like that they are very Christian people that like want that also like love Drake and Kendrick and Travis Scott and they're and they're taking this perspective and these messages and they're they're packaging them in this way and, mm-hmm. and they're saying like yo like here here it is and you know on the you have the you have every other perspective, you know what I'm saying saying? So I think it's no, just No, I agree with you, yeah. Uh I think the question is what religion how does religion fit into music? And I think I like that question is an easy one, which is religion and music are go hand in hand because music usually is a reflection of the artist. A lot of people are making music they want to make about something that they feel, mm-hmm. much like much art, most art. But from a Christian perspective, like first of all, you know how Jesus had a lot of names, or God has a lot of names. He has you have Jesus, you have Yahweh, you have um, Alpha o- Omega. You have all these different names that I mean, there's tons of them that mm-hmm. Jesus called. Uh, well, the, the enemy has lots of names. The enemy, uh, Lucifer, Satan, Mephistopheles. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all that stuff. And you got one that's like. A lot of people don't know this, but the Master of Harmonies. I'll, I'm a, I won't get too far into this because it's a whole other conversation, but like, um, if sin wasn't desirable, we wouldn't want to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, for instance, like sexual morality, you know, lying is easy to get, it's easy to finesse your way through stuff if you lie. Stealing, it's, that's things for free. Mm-hmm. Um, creating creating a, a graven image, which is the second commandment. A graven image is pretty much just creating a God in your own image, mm-hmm. um, which is like a God that not doesn't doesn't condemn you for sin. I think God forgives me. I think God will he'll he'll like I don't think he's as he's as he's a as strict as he is. I think that that's a God that doesn't represent love. That's not what the Bible says. So that's creating God in a graven image. Mm-hmm. Um, creating a God that's comfort, comfortable and, and that you can hug onto that God does exist. But mm-hmm. there's another part of it. There's another God that exists, mm-hmm. which is saying this thing, these things are wrong. And if you, want the, if you want the best life possible, if you want, I'm going to hand out, I'm going to lay all these things out on a platter. For instance, no sex before marriage. Um, if you only pick one person, if everyone had followed that, then STTs would have ceased to exist. Mm-hmm. Period. They would have ceased to exist. It's only something that's transmitted through having sex with multiple people. It would have ceased to exist. So mm-hmm. these, these is a, this is a blueprint for how to live a better life and that you can um, that is that is relinquished of all problems that are caused by sin, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that the reason that music sounds so good to us, Drake, I got sins on my mind. Like it's these are these are all things that like I have I think I have a lust on my mind all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not a lustful person. Mm-hmm. And when I listen to that music, it makes me want to go out and and, and act on the on these things. These are these this music sounds good because it's a reflection of what we want to do. It's of the flesh. Yeah. So all that to say, like the reason he's a master of harmony is because he leans on those desires that we have as humans, and that music is going to reflect that, and we're gonna to want to listen to it. And that's why we like Sam Hunt. That's why we like Lil Nas X. Not to say they're not great artists, but the music. It, it gives it, it it promotes the idea of being so much yourself, d- d- giving giving into all the desires that you have with no restrictions. Right, it feels great. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would love to short do that. term. Short. I would love to yeah. do that. I would love to die and go to heaven and have done everything I wanted in my life that I ever wanted. But the truth is, it's not real. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, anyways, yeah. all that to say that. There's a lot. It kind of kind of went off on a tangent there, but like, um, I feel like if we're talking about religion and I'm a religious person, I'm just gonna do my duty. So yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, gang. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Thickest These podcast. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully, they won't pick up the different shades of yellow you have on. But uh, well, I'm hoping they pick it up because it was actually a style choice. Dang, bro! Like, I had to like figure out a way to like get my ego past that. <laughs> Like, like, like I just really, like I, I just really just ended this on like a negative note. No, but the, like I like, look corny if I'm like I'm look corny if I don't like if I don't just I'm like oh yeah you're right. So I gotta be like oh yeah it was a style choice when actually I'm just insecure hey, about it. David, David, you look fresh, bro. You got Appreciate compliments it. on your outfit, Appreciate bro. It, bro. But also like you might be a little colorblind. That's what I'm saying. Bro, you do too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. Peace. Yeah, baby, need top five when I'm done going mental. Yeah, I'm locked in. You can peep my condition in the lab all winter. All summer, yeah, I went dumb, now I'm about to go dumb and throw